Both in Soviet times and today, Russia is the epicenter of military experimentation. But experimenting doesn't always end well, especially when it comes to aircraft worth hundreds of millions of dollars. In this new video, we're going to take a look at the boldest and weirdest prototypes the Kremlin has produced, from spacecraft capable of entering orbit, to fighters with inverted wings. They all have one thing in common, that they never made it into service. Why these wonderful ships were left in the scrapyard of history? Join us to find out. The year was 1956, when the Myasishev Design Bureau presented a one-of-a-kind supersonic strategic bomber prototype, the M-50 Myasishev. It was a heavy model, with a long range and great power thanks to its design with four jet engines. These engines were mounted on its delta wings, two Dobrynin VD-7 MS below, and two Dobrynin VD-7 BS at the tips of the wings. This design was original and unique in its kind, well ahead of the rest of the ships of the time. Its appearance alone was already futuristic, the central fuselage was circular and elongated like a missile. It had very thin wings, especially for high speeds, and its fuselage was built with a new system of welds that hid the rivets and joints, making it less detectable and more aerodynamic. It had a gigantic internal weapons bay located in the center of its fuselage, allowing it to carry a payload of 30 tons of conventional and nuclear explosives, as well as missiles, notably the Myasishev M61. In 1958, the M50 prototype was the center of controversy in the United States, when Aviation Weekly magazine published photos of this model under the headline The Soviets Test a Nuclear-Powered Bomber. The article claimed not only that the aircraft was real but that it had been demonstrated to various communist associates. The reality was much less auspicious, not only did this technology not exist, but the M50 was in a clear process of decline in terms of political interest. The competition was not another aircraft, but developments in ICBMs that would render bombers like the M50 useless. The project was cancelled and the money went to Soviet ICBMs. Today, if you want to see one of those wonderful M50s, you should head to the Menino Air Force Museum in Moscow. But if you're on a trip to Moscow and visiting the Air Force Museum, there's another impressive bomber sitting in the galleries, an advanced design that never entered service, the Sukhoi T-4, also known by the mysterious name of aircraft number 100. Basically it was a supersonic bomber prototype that could also carry out reconnaissance missions at high speeds. Its appearance was captivating and strange, it had a delta wing design combined with canard-type front wings. Like the M50, it was powered by four large turbojets, installed side by side under the aircraft's center fuselage. Later, this technology and engine layout was used by the successful Tu-160, which was built in series. Interestingly, the doom of the T-4 was precisely its advanced technology and expensive design. Sukhoi's model was built with experimental materials such as titanium and stainless steel, using the same special welding system as the M50. In addition, it had the first fly-by-wire digital flight command system, which today is considered essential for any military ship. The T-4 also had a conventional support hydraulic control system, which improved the safety of the aircraft, the nose could be lowered to facilitate visibility during takeoff and landing. The first T-4 flew for the first time on August 22, 1972, completing its tests on January 19, 1974. During that period, only 10 takeoffs were made, with a total of 10 hours and 20 minutes of flight time. In those tests it achieved excellent speeds and surprised the officials, but what left them speechless was the cost of production and the complexity of the system. Not only did ICBMs offer more destruction at a lower price, but there were other models of Soviet bombers such as the 222 m that had a much more balanced cost capability ratio, and thus managed to enter service. Unfortunately, the wonderful Sukhoi T-4 did not have the same fortune. Many of the aero projects are based on the need to keep up with the enemy, and that was the case of the MiG-1.44 technology demonstrator created to counter the North American developments in the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, which resulted in the mythical F-22. 
However, the MiG-1.44 did not have the same luck. It was a fifth-generation fighter specialized in air supremacy missions. It had a sighting system for combat against other IRST-type aircraft and an aiming system integrated into the pilot's helmet. Russia took it upon itself to provide the 1.44 with all available advanced avionics and detection technology, but that was not enough. The big problem with the Mikoyan was the constant delays and overprices in the production of the prototype. Its development was slow, expensive and constantly postponed. Although its qualities were promising, the Russian Bureau decided on other ships to fulfill the role of the 1.44. The Soviet Union was never afraid of aviation innovation, and some of the boldest concepts of the 1960s and 70s emerged from its companies. Among them, the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-105.11 stands out as one of the most incredible, the experimental orbital passenger aircraft. It was developed within the Spiral Aerospace System program, a Soviet project that sought to create a reusable spacecraft, an aircraft that could go into orbit and then return to Earth in the same way that a conventional fighter would. Its form was striking, earning it the nickname Lappet, or Shoe, for the shape of its nose, raised and curved like the front of a running shoe. This curious orbiter was based on the design of the Tsaiban PKA spaceplane of the 1960s. One of the most notable features of the MiG-105.11 was its movable wings, which were kept inclined 60 degrees during launch, orbit, and re-entry, which favored the stability. The large size and thickness of the nose helped to reduce the heat generated during re-entry, which was also adopted by NASA for the HL-20 proposal in the 1980s. Ground tests of the MiG-105.11 began on December 2, 1975, performing supersonic speed and drop tests from a 295 carrier aircraft. Despite the advanced design, the spiral project, on which the MiG prototype depended, was cancelled in 1978, giving way to the development of the Buran Space Shuttle. Although the MiG-105 never got to see the stars from orbit, this manned test vehicle was used for research and study of low-speed landings of spacecraft. But when it comes to extravagant and iconic shapes, no Russian prototype beats the Su-47 Burkut, or Golden Eagle, also designated the S-32 and S-37 during its development stage. It doesn't take an expert to understand why the Su-47 is unique, those wings in the shape of an inverted arrow you don't see every day, the design is only comparable to the Grumman X-29. The Su-47's fuselage is composed of aluminum with a titanium alloy and 13% composite material. The design features two rear radomes on the sides of the engines, each of a different size. The one on the right houses a radar, while the one on the left a parachute. In addition, it has two radars of different waveforms to detect possible enemy threats at different altitudes. Thanks to its unique shape, it can perform maneuvers with gravitational forces of up to 9G while maintaining stability and control in all types of weather, altitude, and speed. The truth is that this inverted wing fighter is not an absolute failure like the rest of the aircraft we explore in this video, it has been used as an experimental aircraft to test various technologies that will later be applied to 5th and 6th generation fighters. The curious Su-47 may never reach mass production nor will we see it flying in large formations over the skies of Moscow but, in its own way, it has more than met its goal. This is how we come to the end of this video, if you like this content, we invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to be aware of our news. We are waiting for you in the next installment of Military Aviation.